The purpose of this video is to review with you how to solve for unknown angles. Keep in mind as you proceed through the video that as you're watching a video for learning or for understanding, its purpose is different than what you, when you watch something for entertainment. If there's something that I say that doesn't make sense over the course of this video, you want to make sure that you take the time to stop, to rewind, and to replay until that idea makes sense. All right, let's go and review a few key ideas or basic understanding from middle school. The first of which has to do with vertical angles. You should remember that vertical angles are always congruent or equal in measure. So in that very first picture there, there's a couple pairs of vertical angles going on. These two guys here that are opposite or across from each other are always going to have equal measure and we can therefore write an equation that states that their measures are equal. We could also do the same thing for those blue angles in the picture. Notice that I marked the blue angles with two arcs, whereas the red angles are marked with one arc, indicating that the blue angles are equal to each other, but not necessarily equal to angles A and B. So maybe I might call these C and D, and I could say that while angle A was equal in measure to angle B, angle C would have to be equal in measure to angle D. And that you should remember from middle school. The next one is one you should remember from middle school also, and that's called the angle addition postulate. And that sounds fancy and it sounds hard, but really what it means is I'm taking two angles, one of which I just made purple, the other of which I made green. And the angle addition postulate just says that if you add the two smaller angles together, what you end up with is a larger angle, which I just made blue. So in other words, the purple one plus the green one together equal the blue one, which I just made, again, blue. And that's known as the angle addition postulate. The third one is review from middle school as well. It just says anytime you have two angles that form a linear pair, they're always going to be supplementary. Or you might say angles on a straight line are always supplementary. So what that is saying here is that because these two angles together form a straight line, we know that they have to be supplementary and therefore have a total degree measure of 180 degrees. Now the next one I think is a lot the same, but instead of there being two angles on the same straight line, there are four. But the idea is still basically the same. You take angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D, and because all of them together are adjacent angles on the same straight line, they have to sum up to 180 degrees. So if we were to write an equation there, to solve for a degree measure, we would just say all four of those angles totaled together must have a sum of 180 degrees. And then the last one has to do with angles around a point. So we've got these three angles together all around point B, and we know that always in a circle it has to add up to 360 degrees, and that's sort of what we're looking at here. Angles around a point are always going to sum to a total of 360 degrees. So in other words, if we total all three of those angles together, the result that we're going to end up with in our equation is 360 degrees. All right, so those are the basic ideas you have to remember from this video. I'm going to ask you up at the top of page 8, in your own words, to summarize exactly what are the key ideas and the important understandings that you need to make sure you're able to remember from this video. Remember, if you're not able to summarize the key understandings and important ideas by looking at the notes that you took on the preceding page, you can always stop the video, rewind it, and replay the parts that are important until you have the information you need in that section up under question number one. Once you've done that, you need to see if you can use the information that you've learned to go ahead and solve the problems in number two. If you have questions, now would be a really good time to write them down at the bottom of page eight so that you can remember to ask those questions the next time that you come to class. You can always email me at any time with questions 
or you can always stop and rewind and replay the video and maybe that might answer your question. Lots of ways to get those questions answered. Please, please, please remember to ask. Thank you for the gift of your time and watching the video. And we're going to take what you learned in this video and use it to solve some problems the next time that you come back to class.